Well, hello there, humans of these earthlings, whoever you are, where if you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushkin. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the brand spanking new American Light at tier 9, the T92E1. I'm going to do another review after this on the Sheridan, obviously, and some of them are going to have some very similar talking points. I want to talk about both the way they affect the gameplay, uh, my ideas and thoughts on the missiles, uh, how this has drastically affected the meta of the game itself and how to drive the tank to be successful because I've had a lot of fun with this tank and I do think that it is an absolute giggle. Now, before I go any further, let's just say that I was exceptionally worried about the whole idea of missile combat in World of Tanks Blitz. Anyone that's been around long enough would know that when we had the T-49 uh, missile fiasco at tier seven. It was uh, the ATG. It it was not fun. It was not fun. It was horrible, and it was absolutely exploited to hell and back. Particularly by people using PC auto aim, basically raining down bombs from the sky. Uh, it was pretty crazy. So. I was incredibly, incredibly cautious with regards to this tank when it popped up. Uh, I didn't really want to run it on test. My whole problem with the uh, the tank was how it was going to perform on live. I don't think test gives you a really good idea on that. And what I found is actually that I think Wargaming has done this incredibly well. Now, I know there are a lot of people who have issues with it, um, but... The missiles are pointless. They're bloody terrible. And they are so slow and so much less easily controlled than the previous form of missile that it doesn't seem to be worth running. The best results I've had with the tank are just using APCR and doing whopping big amounts of damage with APCR because it does have a unique weapon system in terms of its drive-by ability. It's like driving a T49 at T9, but without the whole dealio of having heat and HE, which can really screw up the amount of damage you can capably do. The gun that you want to be running on it is the T, uh, T9 152mm XM150E3. Now, that means that it is a 150mm missile gun. Uh, that doesn't mean that it is a 150mm gun that gives you the huge 940 alpha uh, HE round. No, 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 no. It is not that at all. It gives you a 680 HE round uh, and it gives you a 560 APCR. And the missiles only do 560 as well if they hit for a full measure of devotion. And what that means is that you have a, a gun that can peek a boom the hell out of things, has terrible DPM, terrible dispersion. Like the dispersion is god awful and your DPM is god awful. 2073. The biggest negative to deal with in this gun is if someone can push on you another light tank or another medium, then they can just terps you up uh, with their damage per minute numbers. Your damage per minute is awful. Your armor profile is awful. Um, you're not going to stop anything outside of a cold. Uh, and even then, I think you'd probably be in bed for a few days. What you have going for you is speed, uh, camouflage, on-the-move camouflage, which is the light tanks, race on dare. Uh, and you also have just a completely different play style. Now, one of the things I've struggled with in this tank, really struggled with, is winning. Uh, and it's not the reason you think. Um, the vehicle itself is running at 42% after 34 games. And considering I've played this for 34 games and the, Sher the Sheridan for about 40 games, like, I love these tanks. But the teams have been losing, and a lot of the time it's because the team that seems to move in one direction together generally has an advantage but even more so on this map because it's it's almost like the old middleburg issue where a heavy on his own will go town and everyone else will go the hill and he'll die and then bitch and moan for five minutes about how you all should have gone town with him um, or there'll be no one in town and he'll go all the way through town and climb the hill slowly to die on his own at the other side and bitch and moan about how no one went down with him the meta's changed. There's just too many light tanks. Look at this game. There are one, two, three lights and five mediums. That's eight tanks out of a possible 14 are light or medium tanks. Uh, and there's only one heavy either side. And what I was finding was quite often the heavies would just go the old route. They would just go 
They're same old, same old way. Same with the TDs. Uh, they just camp at the back and wait for all the heavies to pop up for them to shoot or the mediums to pop up after they've been spotted by each other. Because occasionally you get a bat shot in the game to do a light tanks roll, but generally not. Well, now there are freaking light tanks everywhere and there are mediums and lights everywhere and it is causing an absolute breakdown in the TD-dominated meta. Um, Wargaming had to introduce a bunch of matchmaking rules to deal with the amount of people driving 183s and Jaegerus and things like that. A couple of, uh, like probably 12, 15, no, nearly two years ago now. And they basically limited the amount of TDs you could have in a game. Well, before that happened, there was at times four and five TDs on a team, okay? Um... The, the issue you have here is that that is no longer the case and the player base is struggling to adapt to it. Really struggling. And I'm finding this just hilarious. I love the chaos. Absolutely love the chaos. If you drove the T-49 originally, this is the kind of tank that just belted the crap out of it. Um, the... This is the kind of tank that you've got here, rather, not built the crap out of it. This is exactly what you've got here. It's a, a tank that a lot of people don't know how to deal with yet, and it's a tank that hasn't yet developed its own set of natural predators. I would like to point out that if you were running around in an E50M or something against this thing, even a 62A, it is brutal. Um, you don't want to be dealing with proper medium, high DPM tanks. The tank, for all that it is insanely OP in its single shot damage, has such low, uh, you know, consistent damage that you've got to find a way to turn it into a, a knife fighter when you're opposing it. You've got to find a way to bring it to battle. And the way it does its best is when you actually find these incredible positions where you can use light tank camo and the on the move ability of that to, and your actual 10 degrees of gun depression to output tremendous amounts of, uh, of damage. I'm going to show you two games that really highlight this right here. This is a very aggressive move, but have a look again. Look at this game. We've got three lights. We've got three light tanks on this team. The enemy team has three light tanks. There is one TD on both teams. One TD on uh, one heavy tank on both teams. That's that's absurd. Okay, previously that was never going to happen. And the old TDs are in their old vanilla positions in spawn, overlooking, waiting for the shots. The only problem is, in a light tank, positions like this become tenable. I can abuse the crap out of these bushes on either side, reset my camo, and I've got like a 16-second reload anyway. So it's not like I'm going to run out of um, run out of options here. Like a reset on camo is 9.8 seconds. So I pull back, have a cup of tea, think about life, and this is where this tank is amazing because it's primarily a peeker boom tank. It loves peeker boom. It will pull out. It will get a peeker boom shot off. It will pull back in. You've just got to really be very careful. Now, a lot of people have mentioned to me that they run calibrated shells. I find calibrated shells to be exceptionally poor in terms of a, an, you know, an equipment choice. It helps with HE. You already have a massively over the top amount of HE, of, of heat pen on this tank. Um, your heat pen on this tank goes up from 340. I think it's 340. Let me just go check that. Yeah, 340 millimeters of heat pen. That's a huge amount of heat pen for a tier nine light. The problem, obviously, in using that heat pen is that the missile system on this tank is not particularly good. Um, it is such a slow velocity shell type or, or type of ammunition that it's exceptionally easy to just dodge it um and occasionally you'll get hit over the top of of little hills but for the most part it's a very very difficult round to get the most out of because it will just if you fire a lot of the heat seekers uh of the heat seekers if you fire a lot of the guided missile systems what you'll generally find is that it just hits either the ground or they turn their tank and it hits a track and it eats the module. And then you've got 16 seconds to reload. And when you've got a tank with such a low uh, persistent damage output, like 2000 DPM on a tier nine tank, that's the same kind of 
DPM you have on the IS6. Um, I'm not kidding. Like that, that is the kind of DPM you have. It is less than like a KV5 or a KV4. Um, when you have that kind of DPM, then you can't afford to be taking a couple of heat rounds out. That's like two of those things is 30 seconds in the sin bin waiting to come out and, and have a shot and help the team. And you can see me just manufacturing and exploiting the crap out of these areas at the back. And then we're going to do the old light tank thing here because it's such a light tank and it has a very lovely turn of speed. Um, you can get this thing all the way up to 65 kilometers an hour, 22 kilometers an hour in reverse, which is pretty good. Um, and I've got it at 77 degrees of traverse, which is nuts. That's such a mobile tank. This <laughs> WZ is somewhere over there just camping in the same old spots. What these TDs don't seem to understand is that light tanks are very, very good at moving around the map without being spotted. Your on-the-move camouflage is brilliant. Your on-the-move camouflage, your camouflage rating in this tank, indeed, is 46. Now, that's not as good as a batch hat, which is, I think, from memory, 52. 52 on the tier 9 batch hat, the T25, uh, the 25TAP. Um... Here we go. Watch, watch this. This is. I'm going to show you a missile shot here as well. Uh, and the reason you won't find a lot of missile shots in here is I just found very early on that if you actually want to win and do damage, they're they're terrible. They're they're absolutely horrible. So you've got a 240 millimeter APCR round, and then you've got a 90 millimeter HE round, and then you've got a 340 millimeter heat round that you only ever really use when you absolutely have to, or there's no way to um, make it work. And I think that's fine. I don't want it to have an overpowered missile system. I think that is a terrible idea. Uh, look how close we are up here to the enemy guys. And I'm looking for that A50 particularly. I passed up a shot on the MBT-70, the KPF PZ-70, because I wanted to make sure I got a shot into that uh, E50. The E50, is a, that is the danger man for us right now. Um, and you can see there is a T-34 and two up the top looking to use his strong turret. Uh, and that is the kind of situation here where you have time to actually... Oh, hang on. There we go. Lovely. Think of it like this. If you fire a missile, you have to guide it in. Now, that is a tricky proposition when they're just below the thing. But if you can find a bush like this where it resets your camo and, and gives you that camo advantage... You can do things like this, where you actually see the target. You know you've got a massive amount of heat pen. You just let it come in, and then you pull it down at the end, and you get a lovely 515. And watch the chat here. Our uh, mate in the T-34 and 2 says something. I can't translate it. Uh, Japo or something. I'm guessing it doesn't. It's not friendly. Um, <laughs> so for all the fact that it is incredibly quick and it is incredibly nimble, it works best as a, it really does work best as this peekaboo monster. Like it's not a DPM brawler. You don't want to be running around trying to circle and and just blast everything into bits with your 2500, 2800 DPM, your 3K DPM. Your, I mean, there's other tanks at the tier that'll do that for you. Your STA-1, for instance, your Leopard PTA. They're amazing like that. You're not, you're just not. You, you don't have that capability. So don't try and do that. Try and do this. Try and be a sneaky little grub that uses concealment and mobility and agility to just... Like, we have absolutely destroyed their flank here, uh, doing nothing more than exploiting game mechanics and using APCR rounds. And voila, hello. I love the tank. It's a lot of fun. The The grind on this is good too because if you're going for tier 10, you've already got a T49, the grind on this is fantastic. This is a fun tank to grind. Like This is a great fun tank to play. I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for watching. Um, stick around for the Sheridan video. Uh, we would have had more damage here, but the grub over there just decided to run away. The uh, Panzerkampf, Wagen, whatever the hell it is, MBT-70. Um Lots more coming down the pike. Stay safe on the battlefield. Look forward to the Sheridan vid that will be out in the next couple of days. And until next time, bye for now.